I'm Marie and welcome to the live show. We are Living Felt and we're so glad to join you today because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everybody, we have like a double start to today's show, but what a way to kick off the new year. Thank you for being here. Today we are making bird beaks and legs and feet. Oh! <laughs> We have sound, that's good news. As long as we have sound, that's great. Thank you everyone for joining us for the live show. And if you're watching the replay, you can stick around for a few minutes and get to know us and we get to know you, or you can jump ahead to the tutorial. Today we're making bird beaks, legs, and feet so you can get your little felted critters exactly where you want them. And thanks y'all for being here and happy new year, everyone. Uh, so this is an interactive show. Please chime in if you're live in the live chat, if you're watching the replay, leave your comments and questions down below because everybody, whether commenting live or leaving feedback, gets a chance to win prizes. Um, so on that note, we're gonna give away a few prizes from the last show, which was way back in December. We did uh, needle felted angel tree toppers. And today we're giving away a fiber fun pack to Misty Hensley and to Pam Duffy. So congratulations y'all and thanks everyone for your wonderful comments on that show. But today is a whole new year. We're excited to kick it off with the birds. We wanna say hi to some of our friends who are here. Hi to Kevin in Texas and Dara in Arizona. Diane says it's snowing in Wisconsin. We know it's snowing for a lot of folks. Hi to Lee, hi to Kathy in Idaho, Melody in New Mexico. Nicola in the UK, and hi to Linda in Scotland. Mary says she struggles with bird legs, so hopefully we will get those taken care of today. Hi to our friend Judy in St. Louis, and everyone, if you're ready, say I'm ready. And I have lined up for you the most magical of fairies to share some goodies that you might consider for today's show. And the first up is our birthday fairy, Yay! Fairy Anne. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here with us today. We are so excited. Wooly Wednesday's back. And there have been, to kick it off, over the past, a couple tutorials, there's been a certain tool that we have used and it has been much requested. So we are so happy to share that we have got y'all covered. And that's a pun because these are alls. And it's always funnier when you have to explain the joke. So, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> It's your birthday, we'll give it to you. Oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so we have two different styles of awls. The first one is the tapered awl. So as you can see, it's wider at the base and then gets skinnier. This would be great for uh, poking holes in fabric, either 100% felt or, or linen, any type of fabric. Or um, it's gonna be great for what we're doing today. The other type of awl that we have is a straight awl. So it's it's the same uh, same size all the way down. And this would be great if you, for creating just a really even hole, or um, if you need a longer hole, this is gonna be a great, if you have to tunnel in there, this is the one to use. So both of these tools are ready to be purchased. They're waiting for you, and they are on special today. So yay! <laughs> Next, <laughs> next up is Fairy Angela. Woo! Hello everyone, welcome back. Um, so today's project we'll be working with some glass eyes. Um, we recommend purchasing glass eyes in our size run. So once you get into your project, you never know what size you're gonna want. So it's good to have, you know, variety. Um, so the, our size run pack comes with one pair of each size that we have. So that's a four millimeter, a seven, a nine and an 11, here you go, so you can kind of see that. <laughs> and this is what the size run pack looks like, so yeah. And up next is <laughs> Fairy Kayla. Yay! <laughs> hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you had a good holiday. I wanted to share one of our new felt sheet bundles. It's called Winter Forest, kind of matches our, our theme back here. Uh, the colors that'll be in this one are light gray, white, powder, horizon, chocolate, and forest. These are 8 by 12 and they're 100% wool so they don't have any of that fake, fake stuff in there. Um, yeah, but then I had a super important bird related question for everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> why do crows, why are they able to fly in a, oh gosh, no, <laughs> I'm rusty, I'm rusty. Yeah. I believe. Why do crows 
stick together in a flock? Why do crows stick together in a flock? Velcro. <laughs> I'll be better next week. I'll turn it back over to you, Marie. Thank you, Kayla. <laughs> and I just see a big round of hearts for all the fairies. That's our crew. If you don't know us, we are Living Felt based in Central Texas and feltingtutorials.com. And this is our crew. They pack our orders, answer the phones, answer the emails, help with absolutely everything around here, including helping to name our stuff. So we're so glad to have you all here. Thank you so much for being here. And um, yeah, so I'm Marie and in the studio today with me is Holly. If you haven't met her yet, you will hear her soon. She's <laughs> going to be reading me your questions or your comments as we work together. So I've been reading that a lot of you are saying uh, you might have challenges with bird feet and bird legs. And we decided to use this as our approach for making birds together is to start with those parts and then we can make our birds around them. So I'm gonna get up close and personal here a little Little bit and just show you um, these birds and beaks and we'll look at them a few different ways okay so this is my little um, fat Japanese Robin and uh, these are his legs that are his legs and feet that are in his body um, and you can see that he has little uh, pointy toes and then he has a little beak that I made and then these are our size 7 glass eyes um, and this is what we're going to be making today are these bird legs and these bird beaks. But that's not all. You can make them different colors if you want. So these, these legs are actually black and you can make them brown if you want. So you might not see much difference on the camera, but these are brown and these are black. You could also uh, make them colored and we're going to look at all of this today. So this is a white a uh, leg or foot that has been transformed uh, with a little bit of color and that's what we're going to make so if you're ready say you're ready oh people are saying they look good good so I'm going to show you how I made these feet and these sizes and then you can use these techniques to modify from there we'll start with the feet um, we'll start with the feet and legs and then we'll move on to the beaks and such. And then our plan is next week to make the birds together. Now my feet are kind of twirling around on my little um, tit mouse. And uh, let's see if I can show him, him to you. So here's this little guy, my little tit mouse. His feet are, his legs are swiveling around because they're not permanently attached. So that's saving for you, uh, to, for us to do together today. So is everyone ready, Holly? They are ready. They okay. Are so ready. Thanks for being here, y'all. Be sure to say hi in the chat and tell us where you're from. Um, as I said, this is interactive, so ask questions or make your comments. Now, I want to point out, I'm trying to get my little guy to stand. He won't, he's having a difficult time standing just because his feet, I didn't glue them in place. Um, but we will. I wanted to point out that last year, I think it was, we made the, the Waffa birds. And so our approach today is going to be a little bit different. These are our wild and free fiber art birds. Um, this is a larger bird uh, with a thicker wire and a sturdier leg. So if you made these with us or if you decide uh, to make these with us, you'll see that the approach is um, slightly different and these legs are integrated in the body. And on these little birds, we can we could do it that way. So I wanted to point that out to say you could use this approach that we used on the Waffa birds. You could blend the two or you could on the little ones or you could just do this today. But if you need a bigger, stronger bird, check out the Waffa bird. That's W-A-F-F-A -F -F -A for wild and free fiber art birds. So these are fun to do as well. They love the little bird toes. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is that what they're technically called? We're calling them toes. That's all I know is we're calling. I can't not talk to the guy. Okay, he's got to go down here. Stay. Okay, we're calling them toes. All right, let's kick it off with our uh, little wire legs. And the first thing I'm going to show you is a little um, size guide or card that I created. Well, let's start, sorry, with the supplies. Let's look at that. So here we go. Let me zoom. 
Okay, here's a look at what we're at what we're working with, and we've actually put this together in a little bundle for you. Oh, I brought in some of my beaks as well. So we're going to be working with our 24 gauge uh, stainless steel wire. Uh, that's really the only wire I'm using on these little tiny birds. We're going to be using floral tape, white or brown, and we have this a little basic, birdie basics, is that what we call it? Little birdie, little basics, birdie basics bundle that you can get this together and you can choose the white or the brown. Um, you'll also get the cost clay that I'm working with today and I'm gonna tell you about it as we work with it. In this little bundle, you're gonna get the eight ounce block. They sell it in a pound and we'll cut it down so you can invest a little less, but there's some great things I like about this clay. And then also in the Little Birdie Basics, we're giving you four millimeter uh, glass black eyes, two pair of those, and seven millimeter glass black eyes. You'll get two pairs of those. So these are the supplies we're working with today. This guy has four millimeter eyes and this guy has seven, just to give you some reference on that. So very basic supplies. And then the other thing you're going to want is to make yourself one of these if you make your feet the same of mine. And let me show this to you. A little card. It's two and a half inches square. And if this isn't close enough, let me get in. I want y'all to be able to see this. Okay. Just make yourself, this is card stock. Two and a half inches square. And then somewhere on there, or for centimeter folks, that's about six and a half centimeters. Just get close. And then draw a little line in from the edge. Mine is 10 sixteenths. So you have to count those little tiny lines. <laughs> 10 sixteenths or about 1.5 centimeters. Draw a little line. So for a cleaner visual, I'm just going to use this card. It's the same. Okay. We're going to take our wire here. This again is 24 gauge stainless steel wire. And I like to cut about seven and a half inches. Let me put this down. You can make it shorter or longer. This wire cutters. Okay, and I'm going to take off this curly end too. I think the worst wire cutters we have. <laughs> I did. Okay, now please follow me here because this is, we're going to make two sets of these and they're slightly different. So we're going to, we're actually going to cut two wires nine inches long. I should have made a second one. Here we go. About, actually, I said nine. It could be about seven and a half inches long, is fine. So we're going to take two of these. The first one, you're going to take the end of that wire and make it straight. I want that to be very straight. And then put it on that line and just bend it. Just, just bend it. Let's get this in here so you can see. Does that show up? So we're going to bend it. Now, take this wire, set it down on the card so that this point is sticking up. Let me show this right here. Let's see if we can show this, Holly. Um, can you see? Let's go here. I want you to see that this, take your, the little bend that you made and have this sticking straight up. Then bend this wire around your card like that. So just bend it back. Okay. So now we have one wire pointing this way and we have this wire folded over. Can we see y'all? Yeah, we can see it now. Okay. I just had to catch up. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to crimp this right here so that it's flat and then Take this, just put your thumb or whatever right in there. You could use the card if you need to, but what you're going to do is bend these so that they are back to back like that. And then we're going to cut this wire the same length. So like right about there. You can always come back and make it shorter, but you can't make it longer. 
I did pick the worst pair of pliers that we have. <laughs> okay, so what you have is one that's going, um, you want this wire going back to back just like that. So it's that way. Then the second one we're going to do slightly different. So my wires are twisted. This one we're going to put back on the line again. We're going to bend it. And this time, I want you to lay this flush on the card like that. This one I want you to lay flush on the card and bend this one this way. Now, so now what we're going to do is bend these both the same. So put your thumb in there is just fine. You don't need to, you don't need to do the card every time. You could put your thumb in there and bend this forward. Just like that. Put them together and cut them the same length. Okay, so what you have is a, a leg pairing that's going to kind of go together like that, and then one that goes like this, side to side. Now we're gonna wrap them, wrap them with tape. And you can really you know, modify this to suit your needs, but let me show you what we're going to do. I'm using the brown floral tape for this demonstration, and what I like to do is get a very, is cut off a length, get a very small pair of scissors and trim it into thirds. I'll just do one, so. If you do this, you're gonna have a little more control over the tape, that's all I really want. So we're going to cut it into thirds and we're going to wrap our feet starting at our toes. So this one I'll wrap 100%. Here we go. Start, I like to leave my toes bare and that's totally optional for you. If you want your toes covered, we'll then go all the way. But I want to, I want to have like little claws, you know, sticking out. So we're just shy of the end of that toe. Does it look close enough? You think? Um, I just you're I'm, not there. I'm yet. a little behind it. Okay, so. so what I do is just fold the tape over the end until I can get like a twirl or two. You, with if you've never worked with floral tape before, pull it tight, and then just spin it around and wrap your way around. Just make sure you pull it tight. Floral tape is a little gummy, and it grabs onto itself, and that's what we want. We want a really good adhesion. And then when you get right here to the join, now you can just wrap it, wrap it all the way up that leg and wrap it very tight and squeeze as you go so that it will grab onto itself. So squeeze and twist and squeeze and twist. Yeah, we can see that really well. People love this method. Your little card guide over there has yeah. gotten a lot of love. Good. Yeah. You know, if you make if you find something that works and then you make a little template, well then you're just more likely to be able to repeat it, but also it would help you decide how to modify it if you want to use thicker wire or make a bigger bird or something. Okay, when you get to the top, this doesn't even need to go all the way to the top. You can just tear that off. Now, we want to wrap this second toe and we're just going to go all the way back up the leg um, just like we did. You can make your toes or your feet, or the ankles. I know they don't really have ankles, but whatever you call them. You can make yours thicker anywhere you want by adding more tape. Just beware that where you stop the tape, it kind of wants to come undone. We're gonna fix that wherever you want, but in this case, don't make it too bulky yet. Wait till we build the foot, and you might wanna make a few feet uh, so that you have some tests. <laughs> Kevin says he got his order in. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Kevin. It'll be to you lickety split since right. you're so close, brother. Okay, here we go. Now, so this is our, um, we're going to call this, the. this is the, it, this is actually the, the frenzy backsy toes. So these ones that go side by side, those are, you know, perpendicular from each other, east and west, those are the frenzy backsy toes. And don't worry if the tape's coming a little loose, we're going to fix that. 
Then you're gonna kind of wrap the other foot that we made the same way, but you've got this little forked toe. So you're gonna wrap it exactly the same, but this one is forked. Then what we're going to do, pick who's the front and who's the back, and you can always trim them. We're going to put them together just like this. So one, if, we're, if I were just to do that again, let's see if we can capture it on camera. That's the frontsy backsy, and this is the fork toe. And those are going this way. We're just gonna put that on just like this and butt these guys up together. And now this becomes can you see that? Do I need yeah, to go sideways? Yeah, no, it looks pretty good. Should go, can we go sideways? So this becomes, if I can move this out of your way, this becomes our little bird leg. And we are going to tape that together. And then you can shape your toes afterwards. Um, this is the most stable I've, I've worked with. I've been trying many different ways, and I found that this was quick. It was kind of easy to control um, and it's just kind of working for me. So I start right here at the, at the ankle and let's go around a couple of times and pull it really tight. I think we're calling the bankles now. Bird, bankles? Bird and ankle equals oh, bankle. Oh, so yes. So they came okay. up with that. Okay, so right <laughs> now we're, we're at the bankle and whoever did that, well, you win hugs from me. Let's okay. <laughs> okay, so here we are. We've gone around the side. Let's come around the bottom and you can always go back around the bankle. <laughs> it, was it was Tammy Raid who came up Thank with that. you, Tammy. <laughs> okay, now my foot's upside down, see? So now we definitely want to go around these toes, and I like to go through the toes. So let's come up through, through this toe, and then you, when you come up through the toe, you can come up and go around again, and you can come up and then go around this toe, and just keep wrapping around so that you don't have any really slack. And if you want, you can bridge right across uh, right across the top there. And you can go around the center toe if you want to. Whatever makes you feel like it's more stable. Um, all right, so wrap your foot all the way and then your foot and your leg and go all the way back up. And we want to go all the way back up the leg. If you need to add, so I've, I probably didn't have my tape long enough, but it's fine. We'll start and we want to go up as far as we'll be in the bird. And wherever it's loose or something, just give it a good squeeze. And sometimes I use a tool also. So add more tape where you need to. And wherever, I have my, didn't I not bring my, I didn't bring my clay tools. I can't believe that, that's okay, we'll work without them. Okay, so here in the toes, you can take something like your little awl and go in there and just get that, that tape to lay down. Now you can start to shape the foot also if you want, or you can wait for that. Uh, but what you can do is just arch those little toes so that they will kind of stand um, for you. So just give them a little bend on the end there. Get them kind of shaped. And if this, like this toe seems a little long, the middle toe is always a little bit longer than the others. Um, and that's why I put that one there. I believe these, these wire cutters. Okay, just give them a little bend. And I do like to have it, the foot be able to stand before I go on to any other treatments. So pretty much he's standing up for us. Let's see, can we see that? He's standing up and that's, that's all we really want. So Helen asks, can you use this um, technique on a bigger bird, Helen? And so I really am gonna say play with your wire. I think if you're using like our 20 gauge wire, uh, the straight 20 gauge wire, you might really like it. But um, it's this part and the balance part that you might wanna play with. So I'm gonna say watch the Waffa bird tutorial like if you're going really to a bigger bird, watch the Waffa bird tutorial because we created a spine for the bird from the head to the tail, and then we integrated the wire into the spine. So I think a combining of those two techniques might be ideal. And um, if you want a really solid, very stable, someone can't pull the legs out kind of bird is putting those two together. Okay. Well, everybody thinks you're even more of a genius now with your bird, with your bird legs. 
<laughs> easy. I want easy. It's very doable. Yeah. You've got a it's, lot of a lot of love. It's doable. So let's look at some bird uh, leg variations, and then I'll show you how we get there, how we take it from. You can keep your legs this like bare paper if you like it, um, or you can give it a little bit of a treatment as well. So. Let's look here. So this is the bare, um, this is the bare wire treatment, and definitely get it. You know, wrap your tape so that you're happy with it. This toe, this one, I don't think it's the one I just made, but I would go back over this a few times. So around the toe, just so that it feels nice and stable and strong. So be willing to go back into there. This is what the uh, white floral tape looks like, and it has not had any treatment on it what whatsoever. But if you're happy with the stability and the strength of your legs just like this, then you can um, paint your legs with acrylic paint. This is the brown wire with a very light uh, wash of the, um, the black paint over it. Actually, it's, yeah, well, it's one of these. The black paint over it um, and this, yeah, so there's that. Now, if before you jump to painting your legs or experimenting with your legs, we always talk here about making tests. So just simply wrap some wire, do any of these treatments I'm about to show you, um, so that you have some test pieces right here. So make your, make your test pieces just wire wrapped with tape and experiment with that uh, before painting your legs and deciding you don't like it. For these legs that I finished with you today, and here's another one. So here's a here's a white one with some with some color on it. What I did is I treated these legs. I treated these legs with Mod Podge. So let me get that for you. A few people were asking if you could cover the legs with roving. Is that just um, a personal choice? You can, but what I, I wanted a way that the legs, like, so you can cover them with roving and what I would do, or merino, or I mean, MC1, merino top, whatever you want. And if you do, I would put a dab of glue there. I'd put a dab of glue at the end and wrap up and put a dab of glue here. But I wanted something that would really hold up to being handled and put away and taken out. And that's why I went with uh, what I'm about to show you, okay? Um, so let's see. Let me get my, my platform here. Okay. So here I have, um, right here, I have some um, Mod Podge that we're going to be working with, and we're going to treat our legs. I brought in some of my little clay pieces just to show you how I do this. So this, we're going to be using this clay for the beaks um, as well. But what I do is I'll, I'll make these little clay domes and put a hole in it so that I can put my legs or whatever I'm working with in the clay. This is not one of the bigger ones. Uh, let me just make sure it's stable. Okay, and now I can paint this uh, or decorate this and it's already ready to dry. That's what I do. So, a little water my foot, a uh, paintbrush to get it wet, and we're going to, okay. So the Mod Podge is really just a sealer. It's like a non, you know, it's like a non-sticky glue, really. And I'm just going to brush it on to the leg. It really feels like a great stabilizer and I just brush it on with a paintbrush and I go all the way over the ends of the toes there. And I pile it on the toes a little bit so that you have a little extra on there. And I leave those toenails blank. If you leave this to dry overnight, it will be shiny. And you might like that and you might not. I don't know if they sell a mat. They do. Okay, on the toe, on this little toe part here, you can put a little extra. And all of my feet I treated with the, with, like this, with the paintbrush, mm -hmm. or I dipped it, like I made a little pile of Mod Podge and dipped it, so it's like they have a little claw. So the wire just ends up being um, covered with the Mod Podge. Okay, there we go. So now you can just set that to dry overnight, and that's what the, the clay is good for here. Once you're, get the 
this out of the way. Once your toe is dry, well then you can paint it uh, with acrylic paint. And this one is just painted with black acrylic paint. So let's see if I can do that. So once it's sealed, you can paint it with black paint. And again, I'll pull out my one of my little thingamabobbies. That's Isn't that a technical, technical term? It is totally technical. He's term. too tall almost. He doesn't even fit fit in the camera. Okay. Somebody did suggest nail polish if you huh. don't have Mod Podge and that's paint. Oh, yeah, nail polish. That seems like a good idea. I suppose you just have to test out your nail polish. All these nail polishes nowadays get so, we're so environmentally friendly this with our nail true. polish, right? Okay, so for this, you can just paint, and you can paint the toes or not paint the toes, but I'm just painting with whatever, you know, black satin paint, whatever can get close in there. Just some plain old black paint. Um, and gonna paint my whole foot. And you can paint the toes, or you can leave the toes bare, um, whichever is better for you. Let's see what shows better. Does this show better? I okay. And just make sure you paint all inside the toes. But I like this idea of pre-prepping it um, with the little block, and then you don't have to worry about it drying. It's ready. It's ready to dry. So then you can just set that aside. Are the um, legs bendable after you paint them? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, the Mod Podge, it's, they're still bendable. Come on. Okay, so now for this guy, let's see, what did I use? I think I pulled out my uh, my Copic markers and you can play with that again. See, so I have dark suntan, what do I like? I like that. Again, I make a little test piece and see what colors do, what colors do I like on this? And then I like to not do only one, not only one kind, so when you have, here's a foot. This foot has been treated with Mod Podge. And let's go here. So we're, we're treated with Mod Podge here already. It's got a really good seal on it. And then the Copic marker is just going to go right on. Sorry, I'm off camera a little bit. So you can make the whole thing light and then go back over areas where you want it to be dark. Let's go in a little bit. Yeah, Carol says they look so realistic. <laughs> now these, I dipped the toes in Mod Podge overnight. So, I mean, you can dip them or you can paint them on, but I do the toes in advance and then that wire will stay bare or you can cover, you can cover them uh, in paint or the marker as well. Julie says, thank you for this tutorial. I've been struggling with feet. Oh, I know. You know, you just kind of want something that works and is repeatable. And some of the things I was doing worked, but they weren't necessarily easy. I was kind of telling Holly about them and, or the foot didn't look right like I wanted. So I basically just kept finding things that worked and then blended them together. And I'm sure you'll have some modifications too. So you can have fun with those, um, you know, however you however you want to do them and paint them. And I think that these look, they look pretty good, you know, for a lighter bird or maybe a chicken or something, you know? <laughs> I oh, see lots of chickens in our A kitchen. tiny chicken or chickadee, <laughs> you know, you could really web those feet and make little duckies or, you know, something like that. Maybe we'll, we'll look at that, but so. Could you repeat the name of the marker? Again, we have quite a few people asking. Oh, these are, these are Copic markers, C-O-P-I-C, -C, and my, these are Copic sketch. So let me see if I can get that in there for you. Uh, there's a Copic, I know there's lots of lights in the studio, but it's a Copic marker, that's what it is. So that's what I'm using here today. And there's lots of different shades. You kind of buy them, you can buy them in a set probably, but I, I remember I used to go to the art store and buy them like one at a time. So when you have your legs all ready, all, all ready. Let's look at this one on my little tiny bird here. And this is like where the all comes in. 
You can use the tapered awl or the straight awl for this part, and the, um, the tapered awl is usually what I use. So we are going to go right in here to our bird. Now keep in mind the way your bird, your bird legs are shaped. So if your bird legs have a bend to them, you're going to kind of go in this way. If your bird legs are straight, you're going to more go in, you know, straight, straight into the bird, which that doesn't really show. Whoops. Drop my tool. You're gonna to go if the if the legs are straight, you're gonna go straight in. But if they're bent, you're gonna go more this way. So um, I hope that shows. And what I did is I just bent my I gave my little bird legs a little bend right there. So here they are. These are these two little feet with long toes. This is about the right size actually for a little chickadee. Um, or like a little titmouse, and this is a little tufted titmouse. I've been seeing a lot of these at my house. And so since I've taken this all, and in this case the tapered all, and made the holes going up this way, then we can just slide these legs in. And so if you keep in mind, the longer they are, the little more integrated they're gonna be into the body, and like this. Now, I encourage getting your holes where you want them, and everything, you know, so that they're just right before gluing them in. Because once you put glue in this channel, there's like no ungetting the glue in that channel, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So get your positioning where you think it goes. I think I just switched the feet around, actually. I do, I think like he had a right and a left. <laughs> uh, get them where you want them and then glue them in. So always the question, what type of glue are you gonna use? You can use any kind of permanent glue, like um, a super glue that, you'll, that you're willing to use. Yeah, um, sometimes I even use like just a, just you could use a PVA glue if you want. Just use something, you could use E6000 if you go for the really heavy duty stuff, but try and use it once and get it in there. So let's do that uh, for this guy. Um, Okay, here we go. So we'll go back here and we're gonna glue this one in. And like I said, you really kinda wanna get it once because once that channel gets gummed up, it's hard to unget it. You have to repoke it and repoke it. So just get a permanent glue in there. Oh, that is a pretty runny glue. That's why we have a little mat, Holly. Yeah, of course. There we go. It's perfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'll get it in there. This is like, it's, it's like washable glue, so who knows. I don't plan to put them in the washing machine. So. <laughs> um. Um, Jenny was asking if you, if there's any way to know where to place the legs. I think, you, well, one, you want them to stand. Yeah, Jenny, she said so, hers keeps yeah. face planting, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, great question. But so first of all is, you know, find the spot Find the spot that we're looking. He just instantly stands. Oh, he's he's so he's so happy. <laughs> Let's see. Do can we see him? A, can we see him across there? Let's see if I move him back a little bit so you can see him. He's pretty cute, my little titmouse. And so yeah, I would say just play with it. And the the other thing is, you know, you can um, pick kind of learn and pick the spot for your feet on birds that aren't completely made yet. So whenever I make something like this, I like to make um, usually two or three at a time so that I have one that's my underbird, if you will, and that becomes my model. And then I'll make another one the exact same size. So now I have a reference and then I'm going to cover that one. And I always have that reference back. So that's my tip for you is to be willing to, you know, take that extra step and make yourself a little model. So we're going to set him um, to dry and this slightly bigger bird is done the same way. The only thing is after um, he's done, then I go back and add this little bit of fiber. Let's see if we can get that to focus. Add this little bit of fiber right around. Looks like this one wants to work for us a little better. Uh, that little bit of fiber right around the leg. So yeah, right around there. You just add a little bit of fiber right around there. That works. You just wrap it around and needle felt it on. We'll, we'll look at the bird stuff next time. Um, so let's look quickly at making beaks and things. And for this, I like to use a toaster oven. I just keep a little toaster oven in my craft studio rather than my regular oven because baking this stuff really can get kind of smelly, if you will. Um, and 
we're working with this um, cost clay doll. We also we carry cost clay doll in four colors that are all skin tones. They go from light to like a, a brown color. And then they also have a medium uh, firm. Uh, they, I don't know if they have firm firm, but a medium firm, and I've used both. For this little bundle, we've chosen the cost clay doll, um, but I'll show you beaks from both. And let's just look here. So let me just show this to you up close. So this is this is what the, the clay looks like. And what one of the things that I really like about it is how readily you can handle it right out of the package. So it looks a little crumbly, but unlike clays maybe you've worked with in the past, it works up very, very quickly. So you can get it to be ready to use very fast. And I'll just go ahead and pull off a tiny piece so we can make a beak. Hey Marie, yeah. I have a question for you. Yeah. How do we spell the, the name of the clay? Oh, sorry. We're, we have all these uh, fancy words today. Copic. <laughs> Cost clay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Cost clay. So, here, this little piece is already ready to work and turn into a beak. So, um, or whatever, but in this case, a beak. So I'm just gonna take a tiny little pinch, roll it into a ball. This, this would be kind of a large beak, but roll it into a ball. And then I'm gonna put it right on my little board and turn it into a little cone. You can make it as pointy um, or blunt as you want. My fingers are dirty from the glue and the clay, so forgive my <laughs> my grubbiness. Clean hands really are important, and you can clean your little, this is like one of those little, you know, temporary cutting boards. Clean them with alcohol and clean your hands really well, but we're gonna paint over them anyway. So roll it into a little point, and I would make a variety of beak sizes, um, and then just get yourself a little knife or craft knife. Um, this is just my little, and then cut it off just like that. So now we have this tiny little beak. And save all of your little scrap wires that you get. This is one of the things that they're good for. And then we're going to just bend back the very little tip so that uh, you don't want it too long so that it'll fit inside. How is this different from polymer clay? You know, oh, I meant to tell you that. One thing that's different about polymer clay, first of all, this clay is made in the United States. Uh, the second thing is I can leave this out on my desktop and it will not dry out. So what you'll notice about the packaging is that um, it's not sealed. The packaging, uh, this one is just, I'm going to be opening a new package. I'm afraid I'm going to ruin it, but um, the packaging, maybe how I can do that. Here we go. The packaging is not sealed, so it doesn't dry in the air. You can continue to work it. It's also a little more flexible than polymer clay. So when you, after you've baked it, it's less likely to break. Less likely to break. It's not as rigid yes. as polymer well, clay. Well, it looks like we had a few um, clay experts oh, chime neat. in with some information oh, good. too. So. Okay, y'all know you. more than me. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so here we go. We're just going to take this little wire and I'm going to put it right in here into the into the beak. Now, if you want to do any shaping of this beak before you bake it, you can do it now that you have it on this wire. You can do that. So um, I can't believe I failed to bring my my clay tools, but you can um, you can poke little nostrils in there. Like you can kind of shape it. You can poke some little nostrils. Let's see if we go overhead. You can find what's the top and you can poke like little nostrils in the top. And I would smooth those out with, with something a little more rounded. And you can also, uh, on the sides, sometimes I just use the wire or whatever tool you have. And let's see, does this show? Make sure I do it in the side. I kind of lay the wire to get an impression of the side of the mouth and then you can just drag it. So you get a little line in the side of the mouth. Okay, now this clay 
um, has directions on the side for how, how, how to bake it, but I'm gonna tell you that these little pieces are super tiny and this is how we do it. So now what I do is once you have it here, um, you can put it in the oven. So I should have done this before. It was the bent end that you put into the beak? Yeah, I put the bent end into the beak. What I do is I put these into one of these so that I can bake it in the oven. So let's go front. Like, is it show? Can you see that? Okay. If you have a long piece, like a leg, you know, a leg or something, if you give yourself a little mound to bake it in and you put it in the side, then it won't go up in the oven. It'll go sideways in the oven instead of sticking straight up and being oh, closer smart. to the heat source. Yeah. And then you can also make these little um, multi holders, if you will, so that you can bake a bunch at a time. Just get them all in there. So make multiples and then bake them all at once. If they're long like this, well then, you know, get them going sideways so that they're just further away from the heat source. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Everybody um, seems to understand that. And cool. um, I'm not sure I'm gonna say this right. Coyote has a lot of information on the, co <laughs> on the clay, so they've been helping everybody out. Very nice, okay, good. So now then these, once they're baked, you can paint them. Uh, just like, or and you can use the Copic markers. Oh, sorry, I'm not overhead. Sorry, I'm not looking. Um, once they're baked, you can paint them with acrylic paint or uh, treat them with the Copic markers, just like we did already. Um, so whatever you like there. Once they're baked, they're ready to be painted. You could maybe, you know, you could sand them a little bit. The gray that I'm showing today is the medium firm. Um, these guys are the soft, so not soft, but the regular. And that guy is very, very strong and ready to go. Sorry, I keep getting off camera, I'm like flying, so, okay? So you can paint those. Then on your birds, once you're happy with them, let's get all this stuff out of the way and get our beak back. So get your little birdie ready. And this is a good, this is a good reason to use the straight awl so that you make a nice straight hole back where you want that beak to be. So whatever bird you're doing, pay attention to the position of the eye and the beak, or if you're making a fantasy bird and you know nobody really cares, no problem. This is the black uh, acrylic paint just right on top. And then I added a little more fiber just right over the bridge of the nose. And the glass eyes are input just the same way. Use the little straight awl and then um, insert the eyes right in there like that. Mm -hmm. That's how we add our, make our little beaks and legs and beaks so <laughs> and <cute>. feet. <laughs> cool. So y'all are having a, I haven't been able to watch. Okay. So temp time. So yeah. I'm going to tell you is on the, it's on the package and I think we have it on the site. So it says 275 for 30 minutes. When I'm making these little tiny pieces, honestly, I do it for 275 for 15 minutes. All of these came out totally fine. So Pay attention because the thinner it is, um, the better chance there is for it to kind of burn. And you'll know on the lighter uh, clay because it'll turn a little brown if it's burning. Um, so I bake mine on a parchment uh, paper. I keep them off the um, off the baking pan because if they're in the baking pan, what happens is you tend to get a shiny side because that baking pan is transferring heat back up to the clay. Now I wanted to tell you in case you want to make um, clay feet, and I have made some clay feet, I just want to give you, and I'm not loving them, so I'm very um, new at that, uh, inexperienced, so I'm going to show those to you on my birdie with no eyes. He will see soon, but don't, don't fear for him. <laughs> um, okay, so these are, this is the medium firm cost clay over the wire, and this wire did not have any um, paper over it, but I want to show you that what I'm doing is taking that clay Clay and making a very tiny, tiny little um, noodle, if you will. And so this is something to experiment with. And then I, let's see if I have a piece of wire. Uh, 
I take the wire and my wire, let's say, is wrapped. Let me say that because someone's going to say, is the wire wrapped or not yeah. wrapped? Um, you can wrap it or not wrap it, but experiment with it. So let's say the wire is a little more thick. This one has been baked. This one has been baked and it's not, it will bend a little bit, but there's a point where it will break or you know the clay the clay might crack so you can shape it a little bit but i want to encourage that you practice uh, getting those things covered on just a straight piece of wire before you endeavor to do the feet and and so the wire people may have better tips than this but what i do is i make like a little noodle and then i press it into the noodle and then i'm going to wrap that clay back around over it I probably should have pressed it in a little more, but so that it's kind of in there and then wrap it around and then cover it. It's a little more tricksy on the toes, um, so have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can say. Like I, I'm not an expert at covering the, the the wire with clay, and it gets tricksy in there. Or working with with clay in general, but I wanted to try and do it on the feet. And some of them I like, and some of them I don't. But I'm still working through that. So, uh, yeah, this is this is a very this is a great example of a very chunky, uh, a very chunky bird leg. He's sturdy. Uh, yeah, with clay. He's. He's, yeah, it's very, uh, that looks pretty blurry. I don't know if it's blurry for, for y'all, but um, uh, see if y'all can see it. It's, it's okay, but it's not the best. So that's it. Um, cool. So that's our little episode for today. Hopefully you can get your little birdies off laying on their sides and get them ready to stand and be perched on some cute little wood and uh, maybe on an ornament or a little branch or something. Are there any questions before we go, Holly? Well, since we're on the subject of clay, mm -hmm. could you make the eyes with the clay? Yeah, you could. And you could paint them too, you know. So you can make them and uh, make them on the wire if you want yourself. What you might find with any of these things when you add the clay to wire, if you don't have something underneath the clay, and that might be the floral tape, it might be foil. Like if you're building a big beak, you would shape it like with foil first and then put the clay over so it's not too thick. Um, but something like with the eyes, they'd be balanced on the end of a wire. You might find that after you make them, they come off and you need to glue them on because there's not a guarantee that the clay is gonna stay bound to that, especially that little tiny piece of wire. So the same with the beaks. If your beak seems to come loose when you're done, you might add floral tape make sure you have that bend in the wire. If it's straight, it's more likely to come off or you can glue it onto a new wire um, once it's baked and put it in there. So the other question we had, it goes back a little bit when you're doing the feet. If yes. you wanted your bird to be like um, posed on a branch or something, would yeah. you shape your feet according to that branch? I can talk today. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, so the, I think the thing with, with these feet, um, especially when they just have the, the tape and the Mod Podge, so here's, here's a good example, and that's a, that's a great question. Let's just, let's see what's going to give us the best view. Is it this one? Okay, so um, now I don't know if I can get this to grip. I don't have anything. Where's my foot? Let's see if we can do this. Does this help? Okay. So here's here's my little foot, and I kind of want it to bend. Or let's maybe this has a it kind of rocks, but maybe you want it to bend over the edge. You can bend this after, and you can get that that shape on there. Now that doesn't mean that he'll grab because he's not a real bird. <laughs> those are <laughs> those are not real toes that can you know hook in there. You could you know really go after it because a little bird is really going to dig their claws in and hold on like a hand but you could glue it into place. So can you see that that foot is staying in place and it has been mod podged and taped. So if you go this method without the clay, you're gonna have more posability in that foot. But if this is a sculpture for exhibit or for sale, then you're probably gonna wanna do a permanent adhesive with glue there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but they're posable after. I think we've okay. covered most Anything of the questions. Else? Um, Dara just says your hair looks beautiful. Oh, Dara, thank <laughs> you. And Marilyn noticed you might have a new ring. Do I have, I, I have a new ring. <laughs> 
They're very they're observant. observant. <laughs> my, uh, my husband and I decided after 25 years that we would change our rings, and um, it's been more than 25 years. I think it was 26 last year, but it took us a while to find what we wanted. So <laughs> thanks for noticing. we got prizes to give away, y'all. If you're ready, Holly's ready. She's been writing down your names over there, and thanks, everyone, for playing with us. We look forward to seeing your birds now empowered with their new feet. So I know what y'all are going to be doing. <laughs> what are we giving away? Holly? Okay, we are giving away a uh, a version of our birdie kit. Okay, we have some sixteen gauge bare wire. Okay, this is. I think that is what we use the sixteen gauge for that uh, for the waffle birds. Oh, okay. sixteen gauge. Yeah, mm -hmm. we have twenty four gauge, which is what we use today. Mm -hmm. We have some glass eyes. We have a four millimeter and a seven millimeter Fun. in black. Fun. Some floral tape. Woo! And a quarter of the clay. The medium firm. The, of the medium firm. So you can yeah. play and make lots of birds. Fun, 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 fun. So we're going to draw names right now for prizes. Everyone who's been participating in the live chat. And if you've been watching the replay, we'll leave your comment down below. If you got this far, there's a chance for you to win too. <laughs> okay, I just got to get one. Oh, okay. You're okay, ready? yep. I have Tiff from Ohio. <laughs> and I have, I think this is the name you were trying to yeah, say. Yeah, um, Coyote. We don't know. Coyote. You were very helpful with the markers and the clay and everything. Thank you very much for your help. <laughs> and thank you, everyone, for participating with us today. Happy New Year. We're so glad to be back and to be hanging out with you. So next week, let's make some birds to go with our feet and our beaks. What do you say? All right. Oh, that is the question I kept forgetting to. What? The people were asking, is there going to be a kit? Oh, oh bird there's, for the birds. Okay, so what we have is a basics bird bundle, which includes those supplies that I showed you. I think some people already ordered them, so they already ordered them. So click on the supplies links in the description, and you'll see the little birdie basics. And then what we'll do is we plan to have some wool packs for the bird bodies so that you can build out those colors. So hopefully that helps. And hey, if you're brand, brand new, please um, jump on over to our website. You can watch these videos there. You can reference our old ones. You can shop with us. Get on our newsletter so you always know what's happening and coming up. Check out our school, uh, feltingtutorials.com. We have some great advanced tutorials. We even have an open-winged bird by Kiyoshi Mino, which is awesome. And we have Needle Felting a Rooster by Irina Hughes, which will blow your mind, especially when you see what other people made. So again, that's feltingtutorials.com. If you use something from the tutorial today, please tag us on Instagram. Holly's always out there digging around, seeing what you guys are doing. And as always, we hope to see you in our group, Living Felt Friends on Facebook. Thank you so much for being here, y'all. We just appreciate you. Right? Right. For right. Sure. All right. It's nice we'll to see be you back. next week. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Thank you. Bye.